Today's video involves taking this, and this, and this, and like these boxes are, like they're not empty, you know, they're full of stuff, and this, and this, and this, and putting them all in here. Yes, my friends, we are going to make a full custom gaming rig that is small enough that you could conceivably shoplift it in your hoodie. LTTstore.com. Stealth hoodie, it's awesome, check it out. And while you're at it, check out our sponsor for today's video. The Anchor PowerPort Atom Slim wall charger fits in your pocket and charges your devices in a snap. Learn more at the end of the video or at the link in the video description. Let's kick this off with a look at the case that we're using to perform this feat. Uh, this is the Velcase VK3, and the whole thing is actually shockingly simple, at least on the surface. So we've got our front panel, which is just brushed aluminum with a power button here, and this is all one solid piece, all the way from the back, see it's bent here, and then down to the bottom. Okay, then we've got two side panels that are fully perforated. On the top, they've got two 80 millimeter fan mounts. They've actually got their own fan that uh, they made, which seems to be just sourced from some fan company. But what's special about it is that it is super slim. Then on the bottom, they've got what looks like kind of some mounting stuff. I don't know, I've never built in it before, so we're gonna find out what that is. And then finally at the back, that gives you an idea of the scale of the project we're looking at. That is a motherboard IO cutout. So I have no idea how all of this stuff, including an RTX 2060, is supposed to go in here. Uh, this thing's 80 bucks though, so hopefully they've given it some $80 worth of thought. I don't stand a chance of doing this without the manual, I'm quite certain of that. We'll probably use the shortest, ah! the shortest standoffs. So now that the panels are off, we're getting a look at one of the first lies that I've told you guys in this video. So that is not actually the size of a standard IO shield, and the reason that it's bigger is because it includes multiple sizes of motherboard standoffs so that you can actually change exactly where the motherboard is mounted depending on whether you have like a larger CPU cooler or you have a thicker graphics card. So that is how we are getting a dual slot graphics card into this thing. And in fact, if you need to accommodate a longer expansion card, you see these slots here? The case can actually be extended or retracted. Well, the manual says to start by assembling your motherboard and CPU and RAM and all that good stuff. So we are using, just comes in a white box because this is an engineering sample board, but this is a SUSE's X570 ROG Strix Mini ITX motherboard. And this is a truly special little piece of kit because it's got full support for up to AMD's upcoming 16 core processor. Now, we're not going that extreme. We actually just went for a 3700X eight core processor because that was the most heat that we could handle with this right here. Uh, the NHL9A AM4 from Noctua, which is the biggest cooler that we can fit in this case with a dual slot graphics card, but the capabilities of this thing are freaking sick. So why don't we start by getting our CPU installed here? Everybody loves that CPU insertion porn. Now we're gonna go ahead and throw on our M.2 SSD. So there's just the one slot on this board right over here. You can see they actually had to build up this crazy like riser thing so they could put a cooler in there for the uh, motherboard chipset. Freaking bananas. Honestly, this feels more like working on a laptop than a desktop. And this can go... Oh, we're gonna miss out on this RGB. Well, it's just clearly not gonna fit. <laughs> this build is beyond stupid already. It is going to be great, I'll give you that. Now we've got some Vengeance LPX low profile memory. This is a 3200 C16 kit, so nothing special, but pretty close to unlocking our CPU's full potential there. And now we gotta install our cooler. It's crazy, this motherboard's so small, they don't even have to put all the fan headers in different places, because you'd be able to reach them from anywhere. So there's our CPU fan header. And then we're gonna go ahead and cable manage it, kinda like that, I guess. So we're gonna put it on that way. We're gonna put our graphite thermal, oh, oh lordy, oh, 
Oops. Oh, look at that, I lied to you guys again. There's a second M.2 slot on this board, it's on the back. So do I even use the IO shield? I guess not then. Yeah, you do. You do? Yeah. That is one frickin' dense bit of computer performance. Although I have noticed a potential problem. We know that this cooler is as thick as this thing can handle, but our SSD actually peeks out above it a little bit. So we might run into uh, a clearance issue here. So here's where it gets real, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, what? Normally you would take your motherboard standoffs and you put them into your back plate or motherboard tray and then you put the motherboard on there. Not today. Today, we take the motherboard, we put it straight against the back plate, and then we drive the tallest, a 30 millimeter standoff through the motherboard and then into the back plate. What is going on here? My world is upside down. You can see the back plate of the motherboard is like bowed now. So we're hoping that it still fits without bending it too much. So this is adorable. Um, next up is our PCI Express riser because obviously if that's our maximum clearance, we're not getting a graphics card sticking, you know, way out of the thing here. So the riser goes in here at the bottom and then immediately wraps around the back of the motherboard. And then, why is this so long? Wait a minute, what the hell? No, I know what the extra's for, holy crap. It's gotta go all the way around and then flip back over. That is the sketchiest thing I have seen today and today has been a sketchy day already. So next up, we remove two screws here and here and we pull out this like, uh, like blocker piece, like a spacer piece, because if we didn't have an expansion slot, we, we could actually put it here and then you could install the IO shield normally, but we do. So our graphics card IO needs to be over here. This case is so very different from anything that I have ever used before. There you go, it's in there. Just empty space now. So now we're ready for one of the coolest party tricks of this thing. Remember I said that the spacers kind of affect uh, where the motherboard is positioned in the case? So, you see this little tiny hook on the bottom of the motherboard tray here? That can actually go into either this one or this one, depending on where the motherboard goes. So, I guess we're gonna go with the top one. So then the next thing is to put an M3 countersunk screw in here, which brings the whole package actually kinda together and it mostly lines up. Like I'm legit having a lot of fun right now. This is like the most unique computer build I have done in quite some time. And I mean unique in like an endearing way. So now we go ahead and, wait, we unscrew the riser. Why did we screw it in? Unscrew the riser, then connect the card to the riser, then slide it into the back. So we go ahead and we put this on here. Jake, I'm like mashing this PCI Express riser. I feel bad. Okay, so then we slide it ah, through the back, like that. This is so ridiculous. I just don't, I just can't even. It's actually in there surprisingly securely. It's amazing to think that these are all standard components. It's time for our power supply and this is, this is something a little special. Silverstone, if there's a weird thing that almost no one could possibly want, Silverstone probably makes it. So this is the SST FX350G. This is a flex ATX power supply and it's about as thick as a single server U. So it's got like a little tiny, what is that? 40 millimeter fan, 30 mil? 40 mil, yeah. It doesn't even have uh, an eight pin PCI Express connector. Just has a six pin. So we're gonna need a, a six pin to eight pin adapter, which is perfectly fine. So that needs to go, wait, what even? No, well, it's not wide enough. Oh my God, no, I see it. You, you just wrench this down here and put thumb screws in from the back. That is the worst power supply mount I have ever, ever seen. You mash it down, 
and then these slots, they're not even holes. That's where you put the screws in. And then you just have to, I guess, wrench them tight enough that they don't shift. It's getting heavy considering the size. This is a, a lot of computer. What the crap? How is this supposed to work? So now it's time for cable management. Um, so our 24 pin has to some friggin' how get over here. Oh lordy. So that can go there. <sighs> yeah. Okay, so now our eight pin connector goes up here. So we're just gonna stash the extra GPU power cable over here. That's gonna hurt our airflow a little, but I think that ship sailed a long time ago. And now it's time for the front shell installation. Okay, apparently you can mount drives to this. Now we don't need to, because we're using M.2. Uh, okay, we do want to put a fan or two in here though. Do you know which way is right side up? Okay. So, no, the fan's not gonna fit in there. No way. I am calling it now, no fan is fitting in there. There's no way. I think we might get a fan in here. I'm like stressed out, so warm. Okay, Jake insists that we go for full points and put in the second cooling fan. I think we're gonna need it. I don't think I really have a choice. The amount of hardware that is packed in here. Like, yeah, the sides are perforated, sure, but jeez. I both love and hate this at the same time. It's like, I love it, but it makes me really uncomfortable. So theoretically, everything is lined up. I've got all my fan connectors installed. So now, in Velcase fashion, the way to fit it is to just mash it. Oh! Oh, that makes me so uncomfortable. How are we gonna do this? Anchor one side. So right now I'm jamming the fan power down alongside the fan so it'll stay out of the blades. This is dumb and this is crazy. Mm. I think I can lock it in place here, but do the fan spin. That one's scraping. That one seems to be spinning. Jam it down. I think I forgot to plug in my front panel power. Yeah. <laughs> okay, they're both spinning now. So I gotta keep these cables down, like on the downside of here. Okay. Okay. See if the side panels close. You know what? I'm. Uh, I want to see it boot first. It's bad GBs to uh, close up the side panel before you actually see it turn on. Go ahead and cut. For me, the big thing is how quiet is it going to be, or rather, how loud. All right, I got to put on some little feet here. Some assembly definitely required for this one. It's still cold from yesterday. Honestly, looking at this setup on the table, I'm like, where's the computer? <laughs> it's more like an accessory. Like this is smaller than most external GPU boxes. All right, moment of truth time. That's a good sign. Lights are on. We've got fan spin. Hey, we've got a video output though. All right, so everything looks good. We got our eight core processor, 16 gigs RAM. Now our RAM speed is still low, but it looks like it's applied the DOCP uh, automatic overclocking to the 3200 megahertz profile. So let's try it, let's give it a shot, see if it works all right. Uh, one thing that I wanna get altered here is that fan noise, wow. Okay, so both my CPU and chassis fan are set to silent, but one of those headers is actually an AIO pump control header, and they've got a bit of a different approach to control of that one. It'd be nice if you could just set it to fan mode. So we're just gonna set it to the CPU as a, um, as a source. Auto, you know, let's see if it'll turn down a little bit. Because right now this thing is pretty friggin' loud. Really? 
that's controlled. Yeah, these things are ripping. Okay, I've got ASUS's software fired up and it looks like that AIO pump header has a 100% fan curve on it, 30 degrees. We'll go down to 30% at like 70. We'll ramp up to 55 or so. Okay, that's better. So it was that one fan that was killing us. To be clear, this is still not a silent system, but we need to have realistic expectations. At least this is not horrendous. All right, let's go ahead and close it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just not quite put these in all the way so that our side panel isn't too bowed. There's gonna be a bit of a gap, but hey, if it's good enough for Tesla owners, it's good enough for me. Is that noticeable, Andy? I can't tell. You can't tell? No. So let's tune the other fan curves and then do some testing here. I think I found a profile that kind of works. So I've got my two top fans, which are by far the most obnoxious, set to 25% until we hit a fairly critical temperature of about 60 degrees. So that's where we're, we're loading the system. And then my knock to a CPU cooler, I've gone ahead and set a more aggressive curve on that because even when it's running at a fairly high RPM, it's pretty quiet and a non-obnoxious sound. Unfortunately, you guys can probably hear that even with my two fans at the top running very low or stopped and my knock to a fan not being annoying, the system's still kind of whiny and there's just nothing we can do about that because of the 40 millimeter fan in the power supply. That's one of the challenges with these super small form factor cases is that you're stuck with unconventional power supplies that just require weird tiny fans to cool them. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with this. So let's go ahead and hit it with a load, shall we? So let's start by firing up the classic BMW blender test. And what I'm looking for here is what kind of CPU turbo speeds we're observing, as well as what kind of noise thresholds do we reach here? So it's gonna take a couple seconds for our system fans to kick in, because I configured them that way. But you can hear them ramping up now as our CPU approaches 75, 80 degrees. We're still turboing to just shy of four gigahertz though. 81 degrees, how's our turbo doing? 3.94 gigahertz, still looking pretty good. Okay, let's get AI Suite open and see just how hard we have to hit it with this CPU cooler in order to tame it. I mean, we still haven't turboed down yet. Oh, we've got a couple cores at 3.917. Oh wow, Windows Search, you are so damn useless. HW Info. Oh, a web result. You know, I bet with a slightly better thermal compound instead of a thermal pad, that would probably break us through this threshold. Honestly, it's not bad though. We're still turboing to 3.9 plus, which is respectable, if not amazing for a 3700X. So CPU performance is looking pretty good. I mean, we didn't hit maximum boost speeds, but we didn't fall down to base clocks either. And considering the form factor, even with the noise, I am pretty darn happy with this thing. But life is about to get a little bit more difficult because this is only a 65 watt CPU. So if it's kicking a bunch of heat out into the chassis, these fans have a pretty good chance of removing it. Our graphics card, uh, that's over 150 watts. So they're gonna be working a little harder and less of the fan actually overlaps with the graphics card side of the enclosure. So this is gonna be interesting. Now let's move on to games. Okay, well I can definitely hear our power supply working harder now. Ooh, that fan is going ladies and gentlemen in a computer that you can hold one-handed. We have got Metro Exodus running at over 60 frames per second, 2560 by 1440, like basically all high details. I mean, do you need a punchline? Like, kick him, kick him in the mouth. Good, good job. Take that, spiders. Oh, anyway, I figured out why we don't like the webs. These are very, very bad spiders. Well, there is definitely a lot more heat radiating off this thing. 
let's go ahead and have a look at how our GPU is doing. You know, we maxed out at around 73 degrees. That is not freaking bad. And that's actually without even one of our top fan spinning. So one thing that I would tune about this configuration is that I would definitely add like a, a, a separate temp sensor of some sort and then tie my case fans into that instead of tying them into my CPU temps. Uh, because while I was gaming, I was actually hitting max turbo, so well in excess of four gigahertz on my CPU, uh, and it wasn't even running that hot. Because, you know, obviously most games only use anywhere from sort of two to four-ish, or maybe six threads. Freaking awesome, I really like this thing. I mean, not in an I'd use it sort of way, I'm more of a silence freak than a small form factor freak, but, I think the merits of a system like this basically pitch themselves. You wanna you know, go to a friend's house or let's say your parents are split up and you go between mom and dad's house or something like that. You wanna bring your computer, boom. No, I'm walking out of the frame, dang it Andy. <laughs> The Anchor PowerPort Atom Slim Wall Charger features gallium nitride semiconductors that Anchor used to take their signature technology and shrink it into a super compact design that fits in your pocket or hard to fit places like behind your bed or sofa. It delivers 30 watts over USB-C for high speed charging and can charge your phone, your tablet, your Nintendo Switch, your headphones, and more. You can even charge your 12 inch MacBook with it. It's built with Anchor's multi-protect safety system to protect your devices with current regulation and temperature control. So check it out at the link below. And if you need anything else, Anchor's got you covered with 18 watt to 60 watt power strips at lmg.gg slash anchor. They've got all kinds of other stuff too. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, maybe check out our other recent build video where I upgraded my personal rig with the big brother to the 3700X, the 3900X 12 core with water cooling.